Hi, Gary Cassie here. Behind me you see a building going up, in fact a couple buildings, and we can see all the components of the building, the foundation, the walls, the ceiling, roofs, all that. One part that you don't see that's probably more essential than any part in most buildings is the debt that it takes to build. In fact, if I walk down any typical housing development today, usually 90 to 95 or higher percent of those homes are financed by debt. The homeowners really do not own them. Well, you say, Gary, that's how it is. Well, what would you say if I told you it doesn't have to be? That the average family we found out can be debt free in five to seven years, including their home mortgage on their current income? That's an amazing statement, isn't it? Well, let's find out how to build your house different today. Let's build it free. Let's build it God's way and live a life of peace on fixing the money thing. I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years, I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the Money Thing. Welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda Cassie. You know, Gary, there was a time we didn't believe we could get out of debt either. Uh -uh, no way. We used to buy everything on payments. Yep. And, uh, you know, I think most people are raised with that attitude of if you want something, you're just going to put it on payments. Today, we do not, we don't even think payments, do we? No, we That's not even in our vocabulary to think, no, we don't. oh, it's only going to be $500 a month or $200 a month. You know, Dorinda, let's take a moment and, and catch them up to speed where we really were. Yeah, 25 I mean, years ago, it wasn't too pretty. It wasn't pretty at all. In fact, uh, basically, everything broken, everything used, little farmhouse, every car we had, 200,000 miles, hope that it started. I mean, uh, you remember the broken window frames, the old farmhouse. I mean, it still had the wavy glass. I and mean, this farmhouse hadn't been remodeled mm -hmm. since the 1800s. And no, no heat upstairs. No heat upstairs. But it was a fixer upper. We drove a used car until it would drive no more. Yeah, and we did yeah. make a commitment. But it seemed like for a while there, the harder we tried to get out of debt, the further we got behind, right, and right. Uh, it seemed impossible it seemed until impossible. we got a hold of some things that made a difference. Well, it came, everything got worse and worse and worse till we exhausted every bit of credit. We've already borrowed tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> from relatives, and we were basically hopeless. But we were already Christians. I know you're thinking, well, you need to get, you know, know the mm -hmm. Lord and come to church. But we already were in church. In fact, we were active in church, leading worship in church, and loved God, but yet we are moving backwards and we have found, Dorinda, that so many Christians have lived yes. just like that. What's the answer? It's found in Luke chapter 6, verse number 20. Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. How we discovered that? Oh, well, let's take a look at a session we recently taught at Faith Life Church where we examine that very question and you'll find out. An attorney called, one of many that called and said, we're filing a lawsuit against you for one of my clients. This was not out of the ordinary, but on this particular day, there was nothing left. Every credit card, every option, even my dad said he was tired of loaning me money. Everything was closed down. And so when he called, I went upstairs to my bedroom and laid across the bed and cried out to God because I knew I needed help. God spoke to me instantly. I thought that was amazing. I remember thinking it was amazing then in that day. And he simply gave me this scripture, Philippians 4, 19. And my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus, or it means the kingdom. I said, I don't, I've heard that scripture a million times, but I don't have that. Why not? He answered quickly again. He says, because you've never learned how my kingdom operates. Now, I didn't know what that meant. And that was the first time I heard the term kingdom. What does that mean? I didn't know what that meant. I ran downstairs, grabbed Drenda's hand, said, Drenda, God spoke to me. I apologized to her. We repented. I can remember the exact spot. We prayed. We had no idea what we were going to do. This attorney had called. We had nothing but God teach us the kingdom. All right? Well, at the time, for your amazing kind of information, I was teaching people how to work with their finances. Isn't that interesting? I was selling insurance and securities. And so in those days, 
we all, I was always happy our cars started because to me, I did believe in a God because they started. It was a miracle every day. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They were in bad shape. So when on appointment, the next day I had an appointment. On appointments, I had a strategy. I would park my van around the block because let's put yourself in their shoes. You're talking to me about investing a half million dollars. You look out in the driveway and there's this beat up, falling apart, no wheels match van. And when I started, it puffs and smokes and fills your driveway with smoke. Wouldn't you assume if you are so smart in finances telling me how to do it, wouldn't you apply it to your own life? Isn't that a, wouldn't you assume that? So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm smart to figure that out. So I park around the block and I would always walk to the client's house. But this guy followed me out. Remember, this is the day after this thing happened. He followed me. He's a talker. He followed me down the street. I thought, you know, he wouldn't go that far, but he did. And came to the van. And so I decided he'd wear himself out after a while, but he didn't. So I got in the car. I had to be somewhere else. So I got in the car and finally, reluctantly, I started the car. I knew what would happen. And it did. The whole driveway filled with smoke. And he went, shut it off. Shut it off. I said, right. Okay. He comes up to the window and says, I'm a mechanic. Part-time, I'm a mechanic. Let me check your engine. So he popped the hood. He comes back and says, you have a broken head gasket. Just drive it home. Don't drive it, you know, everywhere. Just drive it home. Get it fixed. You'll be fine. That's not really what I wanted to hear because people that have no money, a head gasket's like a major event, right? And so on the way home from that appointment, I began to talk to God because we just had committed ourselves to learn the kingdom. Didn't know what that meant. I said, God, I can't sell this car broken. I can't pay it off. I can't sell it broken. I don't know what to do with this car. Maybe it'd be better if it just burned up and the insurance company pay it off and I'd be rid of it. When I said that, I was driving and I noticed on the hood just a little speck of paint, that bu- just a little bubble. And for some reason, I remember thinking, I don't remember that bubble there before. But the thing that caught my attention was the bubble was getting bigger as I drove, and it eventually got the size of my hand. The paint was bubbled, and I thought, that is definitely not normal. <laughs> as I pulled into my office, as the wheels touched the berm, you know, the, the little road as you turn into the driveway of the office, bam, the whole thing burst into flames, six to eight foot high off the engine. Think of all the years of the oil leaking from that head gasket, coating that engine. Now all that oil is inflamed, and that fire, that black smoke, just that thing is on fire. Yes! <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I mean, put yourself in my shoes. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I set it, and there it's burning up. Can you, can you imagine that? The firehouse was just five houses down the street. So I called them. Even though, you know, I didn't really want to put it out too soon. They come down there, of course, by that time it's all just smoldering. The captain walks up and says, man, I'm really sorry, Gary, about your car. I knew I had to act at that moment. Yes, seriously. (laughs) (laughs) But inside I was happy. It's like, wow. I mean, wow. I mean, it really burned up. I mean, it really burned up. I just really couldn't hardly conceive of that, you know. I called the insurance guy the next day, and they, they paid it off. They offered me a price, and I read the policy. And I said, in small print, I saw this. It says, if it burns by fire, there's no deductible. I called him back, and I said, uh, you missed something. <laughs> no deductible. He goes, I hear the keypad. You know, you're right. I'm sorry I missed that. $500 more. Anyway, so he paid the van off, paid the bill, overnighted the check to the attorney on time, And then, you know, paid some other bills. We were ecstatic until we sat there that night realizing we don't have a car. (laughs) My dad heard of this, and he called me, and he said, let's go look for a van. My dad's a very generous person. I thought possibly he might buy us one. So we went and looked, and he said, I'll give you $5,000 towards the down payment. You pay the rest. I'll co-sign for you. He knew knew my credit was bad. I'll co-sign for you. And I thought... That's pretty fair, isn't it? I mean, that's, five, that's pretty, pretty good deal. In front of my dad, I didn't want to, I didn't know what to do in front of my dad. He was being very generous, so I went ahead and filled the form out. I didn't know, I was kind of torn up on the inside because we had just made a decision not to use debt like that. Of course, they called and it was approved, come pick your van up in the morning. So Drenda and I that night, thank God for wives. I mean, I was already torn up. She said, Gary, you know we can't do that. So I called the guy and canceled the the van. When we did that, we had to take our stand. 
took our stand. A guy called Drenda that she had met several months before because her parents sold antiques. He called her and said, you know, I run this nursing home. We have three rooms of furniture that we have, we have to get rid of. Do you know, are you interested in looking at any of it? Her parents sold furniture, did antiques in Georgia. She calls them. We shipped it down there. They sold it, and they gave us, bought us a station wagon. I was in a car that was paid for. So I was now getting a picture of how the kingdom operates. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.